Today, we are building a few different size jack-o'-lanterns, free printable PDF files at the Who's DeVos website. We're going places. Two different builds today, one of which only requires a miter saw and however you want to cut out the faces. The other one, it's a little bit more intuitive and includes a spot so you can stick the candle in the back. Let's do it. Option number one. Since my one by six is actually five and a half inches, I cut the end of my board to give me a clean line. Then I cut two pieces at five and a half inches, one for the top and one for the bottom, giving me a perfect square. For the front and back, cut two pieces at five inches, and for the sides, cut your board twice at three and a half inches to keep that square profile. Cut one more piece four inches long for the tippy top. Moving to the table saw, rip down one of the front and back pieces so that it is five inches by four inches. And rip that four inch tippy top sliver to four inches to make it square. Option two, cut four pieces at nine inches long. Cut another piece at seven inches for the top and one more piece at four inches for the tippy top. And there you have it, option one, option two, couple scraps, all from a one by six by eight. And we're gonna get these assembled and then I'm gonna talk about which one I prefer better. So, no scraps. Let's build this one first. Option one. You're gonna get some glue. You're gonna get some inch and a quarter nails because you don't have any inch and a half. So let's go over the pieces. There's a four inch by four inch tippy top, the five and a half by five and a half inch top or bottom. You're gonna have two longer pieces that were that five and a half by five inch, that's the front and backs. You're gonna have a shorter four inch by whatever it was, three and a half inch piece. And then the three and a half by five and a half total, your other square piece. This piece, I'll go over why it's cut shorter here in a moment. So to begin assembly, uh, let's start with all the side pieces. Oh, bud. All right, those are not the side pieces. I also didn't sand mine. So we are going to take that first side piece and add some glue. Ooh, look at her already suck that glue right on in. Put them on there good and straight. And fire a few nails. Now with our shorter piece, starting with the long one because then it gives me the room for the shorter piece, we are going to glue the butt end of our shorter piece. And you're lining it up at either of the ends. At this point, it doesn't matter too much. Oh. Embarrassing. Make sure you have it on the right board. It won't fit if you line it up on the incorrect board, like I had just done. Everything is straight onto those. a few nails to hold them into place. And we're gonna add this board, gluing these. It's knocking the burrs off. Three nails, again with this. Pull them out so that he is lined up. It might be easier to line one of the corners because he kind of tips in a little bit. So I'm gonna line up this top corner. And then I'm going to come back and push this bottom corner. I'm going to hit this nail since it's farther from my fingers. And then I'm going to hit this nail. Just like so. Oh, what? If you have a nail shoot through, what you're going to do is grab some nips, a flat blade screwdriver, and the smallest hammer you have available. And take your nips, pull them out a little bit, cut them. You could also just yank them out, but I don't want to do that. You're going to take your screwdriver, put them on the top there with your hammer. Put a little water and a little iron on there, 
it glue everything nice and pretty. This is on the top. No one's going to see it. I just didn't want it to offset my top piece. So this is obviously going to be my top of the bottom. Throw some glue. You won't need as much as you put on the butt ends because it's not going to suck up the glue as much since this is not the butt end of a board. And I'm going to line it up because we do have a small lip on the outside because that's the traditional look of the pumpkin. All right. Now we're going to flip them over. We're going to shoot some nails. We really don't need too, too many, so... And then don't forget this piece, don't shoot nails into it because it won't hit anything. A few nails in the bottom. We're going to repeat that step for the top. And I do want my butt ends to match like this, not like this. And I actually like to glue these on prior. If you glue this piece on, you can nail from the bottom and you don't have any nails in the top. That's okay. Little bit of glue on there. Again, the butt ends will face the same direction. There we go. Yeah. As for this guy, we're going to build him right and we're going to start out by taking the tippy top piece. Our four sides are all the same size. Tippy top. A little bit of glue, put them on here. Now these, the angles face the opposite way. So the butt end can't line up with the butt end because that's how the spacing is. A few nails. And now the nails are in the bottom. And now the nails are in the bottom, so you don't actually see them in the top like you do this guy. If you're painting them, they're not really going to be noticeable anyway. If you plan on staining these projects or leaving them as they are, you might want to put the nails in the bottom. Again, all of my sides are the same size for this. So we're going to take two sides. I'm going to put glue on one of them. Take a board. Line them up, glue them in place, a few nails. And now we'll apply glue to this side. If you applied it beforehand, you're just going to have a big gluey mess. Get them looking nice. There we have it. Top board again. Should fit snug as a bug in a rug because we cut it to seven inches, which is five and a half plus three quarter plus three quarter. Put him on the top. A few nails to hold him in place. I only do a few because it is the top. Two pumpkins. I'm gonna give these a quick sanding cause they look not great. Seriously, you let me get to this point in the project. Before Don't give me that. Don't give me that. All morning you were going on pop tart, pop tart. It's easier to trace and cut out your lantern's face before turning them into lanterns. In the downloadable PDFs, both of these projects are kept separate because they have different size faces. Now, if you're building the smaller one, you'd have to have a three and a half inch because even if you mitered in your corners, you don't have that much space to play with in here. It's only going to be a three and a half inch wide. So your faces are much smaller for this versus this. And that takes an extra skill level to do because look how tiny these little guys are. So tiny. 
This one, much bigger because we kept the full width of our board. So five and a half inches gives us five and a half inches. And just look at the size difference. A lot easier to cut out this one than this one. It's easier to trace and cut out your lantern's face before you turn it into a lantern, but even before you cut the board down to size. If you're using a scroll saw, completely disregard this next tip. But if you're using a jigsaw or your router, you will want to leave your board longer because that's just gonna give you the ability to clamp it onto your workbench to bring your workpiece out. You can maneuver, not have to worry about anything. You're not clamping you know, a smaller board down to something. It just works out a lot better. If you are using pine or cedar, a softer wood, you could just take this face, line it up where you want to draw it onto your board, trace with a dull pencil the outline. It's the same thing we did in the fall haul video. It's the same thing we're gonna be doing next week in the Halloween video. Trace your project, and when you remove it, you can actually see, I'm not sure if you can see it, the lines where I just indented into the project. So then you're going to retrace those lines. And voila, you have successfully traced onto your board without using transfer paper. To remove the material, use a decent sized bit to drill a hole inside the section you are cutting out. Using your jigsaw or scroll saw or one of these saws, remove the material. Another helpful tool is called a rasp. I picked up these three for four bucks at Harbor Freight, and it's like an aggressive file, and it has these really abrasive teeth, and what it can help you do is clean up any spots in tight corners where just sanding would be tedious. If you choose to use your router, it's best to remove an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch material at a time, and choose a cutter head that's smaller, like this quarter inch versus this beefy boy, and that's gonna reduce the chance of you cracking and exploding your masterpiece. If you wish to add a stem, I ripped mine down to an inch and a half on the table saw, and then this guy's cut to a 15 degree angle. This one is a 30 degree angle. I felt like 45 degrees made it look like it had wind damage. And then you can mount them however you wish, or you don't have to mount them at all. Now, the difference between option one and option two. Option one, it's adorable. You only have that three and a half inches of face space to play with. These are pretty hard to cut out if you have a jigsaw or you know anything. If you have a scroll saw, it makes these kind of dreamy. If you don't have a scroll saw, I would recommend option two. And they're cute. It's kind of a one size fits all because with a one by six, that's you're limited to a five and a half by five and a half to keep them square. And if you went up to a one by eight, you can make them a little bigger, you know? Then you're playing with a bunch of different sizes. And that's just those guys. I did cut out this spacer in the back. That is so you can slide the candle into it, light it, it's more safe, easy to blow out, easy to maintenance. Option two, only requires a miter saw and then however you cut out your faces. No table saw unless you wanna rip these guys down. Easy peasy, it is still that one by six. We are just taking advantage of the full width and then butting the boards up against the sides. It has no bottom, so you can just set your candle down, put this on top of it. It's actually easier than that guy. It takes a special cut. And then you can also completely play with the sizes on these. So this is the one that's in the plan. This guy I just made taller instead of nine inch. I think he was 18 inches or 20 inches, I'm done, I don't remember. And then this guy, I think he was seven. I, hmm. But just play around with sizes. You can make you know trio sets and different things. Otherwise, everything for the build is the same. When you put your face here in the center, one little tea light candle at the bottom ain't gonna cut it. So you might think about also cutting in a spot on the back and putting another little board. Yeah, these are decoration. They are never going to get lit on our back patio. So this, even if you don't want to cut the faces out, you can just doodle them on, which are my doodles. Doodled on, doodled, you know? And if you paint them, stain them, and they're just sitting on your porch, they're gonna look equally as cute. No one's gonna know that there's not a candle lit inside of it. It's all up to you guys. So play around with the plans. 
see what you guys like the most. Play with, you know, the sizing, the paint, the stain, the faces. There's all kinds of inspiration online to figure out what jack-o'-lantern face you want to use. And just have a good time. Since this guy was a little bigger, I was able to upgrade him from that silly little tea light candle to this. Pink Pony Club, I wanna keep on dancing at the- Hey everybody, thank you so much for checking out this content. My goal is to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. So a like would be greatly appreciated. And for the 70% of viewers who are not yet subscribed, go ahead and click on that beautiful man right there. So that way you're not missing out on awesome content like this in the future. Again, thank you so much. All right, it's, it's over. The video's over. Click, you can watch another one if you'd like. Bye.